This is corporate media panicking about Joe Biden's terrible poll numbers. And now they're going after every inch of the elector. That means the third party and the people that sit at home. Let's listen to this. The 2000 presidential election between George W. Bush and Al Gore is considered one of the closest elections in American history. It all came down to the state of Florida. On election night, the returns had Bush ahead by such a small margin that state law required a recount. This triggered a, triggered a month-long series of legal battles which ended in a highly controversial Bush v. Gore Supreme Court decision. When the recount was stopped, the Florida State, the Secretary of State, certified that Bush had won the state by just 537 votes. That's a margin of 0.009 percent. That election, the entire election, was decided by 537 votes. But as Marcella Valdez of the Washington Post points out, historically, elections are decided not only by those who cast votes, but also by those who don't. So there's a case to be made that the 5 million Floridians who were eligible to vote in Florida in the 2000 elections, but chose not to, are really the ones who tip the scale. There are many reasons why eligible voters stay home on election day. It could be that they just can't be bothered, that their vote, at least in their state, won't matter anyway. Or maybe they can't make it to a ballot box because of work or transportation or illness or any number of reasons. That's valid because voting access remains an issue. Or maybe they're just missing that spark, lacking the enthusiasm for either candidate. That, in my books, isn't valid because someone's going to win that election. And it's your responsibility in a democracy to. That's not <laughs> that's not valid. You stand home because your two choices are genocide or in a democracy or just genocide or genocide with a Muslim ban on the side because those are your options and you're refusing to. That's not good enough, according to this corporate shield. Let's listen to the rest of this. But that's basically what this is. They are afraid. They, have, they don't know what to do. J uh, Donald Trump, all the charges they brought up on him, not doing anything to him in the polls. All he's winning in 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 particular in important parts of some of these court cases, like delaying the Atlanta case. That was looked at as one of the strongest cases and most consequential cases, the one with Fannie Willis. And look what's going on with that. Then the uh the immunity case just got just got set for trial with the Supreme Court in April, which postpones other cases. So they don't they can't lean on the judicial system. Then you have this genocide going on and people are saying no way. So you have all these people coming out, trying their best, doing all these mental gymnastics so they can say, yes, he's terribly and he's and he's supporting a genocide, but still support him. This is Ali Velshi's version of that. So. These people who are progressive on corporate media, they do some good, but then that when they do this type of shit, they wipe all of the good shit they do away. Let's listen to Their Alex. state won't matter anyway. Or maybe they can't make it to a ballot box because of work or transportation or illness or any number of reasons. That's valid because voting access remains an issue. Or maybe they're just missing that spark, lacking the enthusiasm for either candidate. That, in my books, isn't valid because someone's going to win that election and it's your responsibility in a democracy to carry your weight. And part of that weight is casting an informed vote. And sometimes very enthusiastic, very informed Americans abstain. Did you notice what he said? He didn't say democracy is just casting your vote. He said, you have to cast an informed vote. That is cold word for a vote from a propagandized framing, meaning you're informed if you're voting for Joe Biden. You're not informed if you're voting for someone else. That's an informed vote from the corporate media perspective. Let's let him finish. Stain from voting in protest to make a point.
A protest vote is a vote cast to demonstrate dissatisfaction with the pool of candidates or the current political system at large. Typically, a protest voter might cast their ballot for uncommitted, none of the names shown, or no preference. Other times, they'll cast a ballot for a candidate with a minimal chance of winning, or they'll write in the name of someone who isn't even running. Those are all your choices. Or they just won't vote at all. Casting a protest... These are all your choices in a democracy. You can choose to sit home. You can choose to vote for the guy that probably won't win. You can choose to vote for the guy that lives next door to you if he's running. That's part of a democracy, picking who you want. Nobody has an obligation to vote in a way to prolong a quote-unquote democracy. No one has that obligation. Citizens don't have that obligation. Vote against the shoe-in nominee in a primary is nothing new. It's often an important and useful tool. It shows that you do care about democracy. Doing that in a general election is That's dangerous. A no -no. Don't do that and in, in 2024. Election. It could be existentially dangerous wow. because this year is different. This year you this have a binary guys. choice between democracy and the expressway to autocracy. When the road splits in two, on the right side, you have a candidate who incited an insurrection at the U.S. Capitol to remain in power after having this lost not the thing. electoral vote, this is who not has vowed to exact revenge on his political enemies. This is not a thing. Don't care about that. taken and stowed sensitive and classified government documents. Stowing government bathroom, documents about an imperialist empire. We don't care. And for sexually abusing a woman. On that same right that side, you have fraud, a candidate don't give a who faces 91 felony charges across four different criminal trials, one who has pledged to weaponize the Justice Department and local police departments, to launch mass de deportations, to ban migrants from certain Muslim countries, to abandon climate initiatives, to roll back protections for the LGBTQ plus community, to make abortion restrictions the law of the entire land, not just in some states. Down that same road on the left side, we see a candidate who has done none of that. He is not a candidate without his. We just see a candidate on the left side. We have a candidate who's marching to war world three with China and Russia at the same time. On the left side, we have a candidate who blames the Senate parliamentary so that he, he doesn't have to raise or, or fight to raise the minimum wage. On the left side, we have a candidate that is uh deporting uh migrants more we have a candidate on the left side who's trying to get rid of asylum we have a candidate on the left side who says he's going to veto health care we have a candidate on the left side who is funding the military industrial complex at a rate we've never seen who's also funding the police state at a rate we've never seen so what exactly are you talking about ali both directions are god awful and people don't have to choose either one of those they can go their own path and just go straight his flaws he is not a candidate who is unworthy of your valid criticisms for decisions he's made and policies he's enacted you can and should be angry with how he's you should just be angry and talk it's what he's saying. You should display your anger at his policies, but you should not do that at in November. What does that do? Who does that help? But Joe Biden. That doesn't help you, the voter, get anything to have this perspective that Ali Velchi is trying to push. He's handled certain issues. I certainly am. But refusing your vote is not the answer. Wow. A protest vote is not the answer. Voting for the other guy is not the answer. Casting an uncommitted ballot can be important in a primary. It's a canary in the coal mine, a stark warning to the candidate that all is not well, a message I sincerely hope this candidate hears. And I applaud the people who took their democratic obligation seriously. But that is not the way you prove the point in a general election. In a really? true participatory democracy. How is that possible? 
How is it possible that your tactic can prove a point in a primary, but the same tactic can't prove the same point in a another election just on a different day? How is that possible? See, especially in a democracy that I swear what they do is they hire people who have the ability to double talk, who have the ability to talk you out of your own common sense and enter their illogical circular logic nonsense. That's who they get. People who have the ability to convince you that what you're seeing and hearing is not what you're seeing and hearing. That is current, currently holding on by a thread. Your vote is your voice. It is sacred, very hard one. In 2020, that main pillar of our democracy came this close to losing all of its value. Wow. Don't it, take it for granted. All of what you, value? When you find yourself at the fork in the road, the road on the left might be a bumpy ride. The scenery might be ugly at times, but the at road times. on the right is a dark tunnel headed straight for a dead end. Wow. That's amazing that he has the stomach to muster up that segment about Joe Biden. Um, let's see. Um, here's, here's something from Joe Biden. Um, let's look at this. What is, what is Joe Biden up to? Oh, let me turn this other video off. Oh, you can't hear this. Only I can hear it. I thought you could hear something. Anyway, let's get back to this pot. Let's bring up this graphic or this headline here. Biden EPA accused of caving to industry pressure on gas fire power plants. So you know that climate president that you guys been talking about? You know how they use climate to try to get young voters? Look at this part right here. Let me read a little bit of snippet from it. The youth-led Sunrise Movement on Friday panned the Biden administration's decision to delay a regulatory crackdown on existing gas fire power plants by exempting, this is what the Biden administration, the Biden administration exempt major polluters from a forthcoming rule aimed at curbing planet warming gas, greenhouse gas emissions. So you know how they implement things in legislation like the IRA? Then they put it out in the future to start. One of those things is about to start, not from the IRA, but one of those things that's supposed to curb, make the climate better, it's supposed to start, and he's delaying the start date. The climate president, Bernie Sanders, is delaying the start date. Sunrise movement that completely threw away your rep, flushed your reputation down the down the toilet over Joe Biden. This article referenced them. Let me get back to the article here, and I'll read it. I'll start again from the from the top. Um, the youth-led Sunrise Movement on Friday panned the Biden administration's decision to delay a regulatory crackdown on existing uh, gas fire power plants by exempting the major polluters from a forthcoming rule aimed at curbing uh, plant warming. Sorry, planet warming gas greenhouse gas emissions. E&E News, which first reported the environmental protection move, noted that the delay could push a major part of the president's fight against global warming until after the November election. Wow. It goes on to say, under the new approach, the EPA is still expected to complete a rule in April that could uh, cut greenhouse gases pollution limits from existing coal fire plants and future natural gas plants, E and E News reported, but the rule coming out in April will no longer include limits for existing gas fire plants, the country's top generators of electricity. EPA Administrator Michael Reagan said in a statement that 
splitting the rule would allow the agency to take a new comprehensive approach to cover the entire fleet of natural gas fire uh, turbines, as well as cover more pollutants, including climate toxins and criteria uh, air pollution. Sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo to me. A lot of double talk because you're backpedaling on this uh, uh, this new rule coming up. But that rationale didn't satisfy some climate advocates. The Sunrise Movement said it was disappointed in the decision and accused the administration of caving to pressure from industry lobbyists. So what did the Sunrise Movement do? What are they going to do in November then because of this? You have a person who's doing stuff that is affecting the, greatly affecting the climate, the thing that is your whole organization, and you're just going to turn, turn, uh, uh, turn over and vote for him in November and push this guy who's going against the very thing that is the core of your organization. Let's continue. Biden is on thin ice with young people, Sunrise Movement added. Make sure the sound is good. I'm almost done here. Quote, he can't throw a bone to us on Monday, let us down on Tuesday, and expect our generation to turn out in the numbers he needs us to in order to win. Don't get us wrong. We applaud the EPA for finalizing the rules regulating harmful uh, local pollutants from these power plants, the group added. These rules are a huge win for environmental justice and will protect frontline uh, communities from toxic air, but we need more. So you applauding them for stuff that hasn't even started. That's the Sunrise Movement. and they're it's Joe Biden. I mean, you got him doing stuff like this on climate. You got him doing what he's doing in Gaza. That's turning off young people. Not doing anything enough on student loan debt. That's turning off young people. Then Gaza is also turning off uh, uh, people of color and black people in particular. Then Gaza is also turning off progressives. Then you got him trying to eliminate asylum with an executive order. That's going to turn off uh, immigration. A guy who already has problems with enthusiasm is just knocking down more enthusiasm in his coalition. And it's just mind-blowing to me that he's doing that.